Now I want to look at some examples of Oracle collection objects. I'm going to look at nested tables, the arrays, and associative arrays in general. First of all, let's do a simple declaration in an anonymous procedure of the types we had on the screen we saw earlier, just to make sure that the coding structure is correct, and it is. So we don't have a compiler problem there, so my syntax is correct there. Now, it's important to note that these types can be created on the fly in PLSQL, and they can also be created to be contained within Oracle database tables. I'm going to concentrate on the way that collections are used in tables. So first of all, I'm going to go and create a type. The type is actually a table or a dynamic array of varchar to 32 characters. Let's create my type. A type is really a separate database object inside the Oracle database. I'm actually going to go and alter my act table and add an object definition of that type I just created. It's a nested table, and with nested tables, we have to declare it as a nested table and tell the database where to store it, because it is actually a table in itself. It's a table within a table, much like a one-to-many relationship. And now we've altered the table. Now, creating a table within a table really flies right in the face of any kind of relational database normalization and denormalization. As far as relational database design is concerned, this may or may not be a really bad thing to do. The point is you can't access this data from anywhere but within the ACT table. As far as relational database structure is concerned, that's not very healthy. I'll leave it to you to decide. Now I'm going to create another collection, which is not a nested table, but a V array, which is a fixed length array. I'm now actually going to create another type, which includes that skill collection type. So I've got a type within a type. And since I've created a type within a type, I have to create a type to cover that nested structure. See, it's starting to get complicated. Now, what we need to do is we need to add this cost collection type, which actually has the type T cost and a collection within it called skills. So we're going to add the cost collection type to the ACT table. Now we have all sorts of types. Let's go and add some data. I just want to show you how this is done syntactically. So I'm going to update the ACT table, and I'm going to set the equipment column, which is a definition of a collection, and I'm going to typecast it to the class name, and I'm going to add this list of values for one particular ACT. So let's copy and paste this and I get that response, which is fine. I'm now going to do something on a slightly deeper layer. I'm going to add some data to the same act, but through the cost collection. And you, if you remember, I created two types. So I've actually got a cost type here in this class, and then a cost type in this class, and then within that, a cost type of another class. Getting complicated. I hope you can see the point. In relational databases, creating objects is not the most efficient and not very simple to follow. It goes down to layers that are really deeper than they need to be, mainly because it's a relational database. It's not an object structure. It's relational. The internal structure is based on table structures and rows rather than object hierarchies, which can be searched in any direction to any point and from any point. Now, let's go and look at that equipment update I did, this one here, and actually look at this data that I inserted for this particular act. This is what it looks like. It gives me the name of the class, 
and all the items listed in that collection. What I really want to do is actually get that data out piece by piece. So I have to select everything from, typecast it to a table object because it's a nested table, and then execute the statement inside there. So let's execute it. And we get everything broken down into individual rows. Eight rows selected rather than a single row typecasting through the name of the class. The next thing I want to do is I want to step by step break down all the parts and information in this triple layer typecast. So let's go and select the name and the cast object from that row and I get something I can't see very well. So I'm going to set my column on this table to something nice and small so that I can see what's going on. Run it again. Here we go. Cast collection, T cast, and there's my other class at the end there. So let's break it down step by step. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the things inside the T cast class. It's a nested table, so I decompose it that way. Now I could also set the column roll to have a very short format. And I could run that again, and I could actually see the values in the skills collection object collection. Now let's break it down further and go and have a look at the skills collection. And here I get the skills coming out. In order to see all the data within the skills collection, I would have to break it down to all its layers to actually pull the data out and list everything next to each other. What these really are are all one-to-many relationships. From personal experience, I would definitely advise against mixing objects and relations at the database level. It is not a good idea. It generally leads to very poor performance, and it gets out of control very, very quickly. What do I mean by out of control? I mean inefficient, extremely inefficient, very poor performance to the point where you could end up with either no job or a new product or a rewrite. 